be here, and it's great to have you here. And uh, it's great to be fellowshipping with God's family. Amen. And uh, maybe more of God's family than normal today. So Today's kind of a special Sunday, because since the start of this crazy COVID thing, we haven't had a uh, family meal together. And we're going to do that today. And uh, we usually do that, oh, once a month or so. And uh, so we're going to try to get back into that habit as, as they allow us. So, uh, but right now, we want to praise the Lord. Okay. It's the song of the redeemed, rising from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven, drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of ancient believers, filled with God's holy fire. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. Let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavens. Let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. God's children sing a glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they've just heard. Cause all the power of darkness can't drown out. to again welcome you all on behalf of Caribou Community Church. If you're a regular here, welcome. And if you're visiting, welcome to you as well. And this morning I just want to take the privilege and the honor on behalf of the church to welcome our church family from the Log Church in the Chilcotin. Uh, they're sitting over there. Let's give them a warm well of welcome. 
Uh, they made it on time. It's about an hour and 15 minutes drive here, and you guys are late. I mean, this is not a good example. So <laughs> but uh, it's good to have you guys. It's such a privilege. And thank you for the hospitality that you've rendered on behalf of Caribou Community Church when I come to visit. Uh, you welcoming me is a way of welcoming Caribou Community Church, and importantly, you're welcoming Christ. And for that, we're grateful. Thank you very much. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, we want to extend congratulations to Eric and Johanna Grunenberg. Uh, they were married yesterday. So that's good. Uh, at the back is this card for uh, Right Now Media. Uh, right Now Media, it's like Netflix with Christian content. And this is free. You can take a card and you can go home. And there's stuff there about Bible studies, personally, uh, children's Bible studies. There's things for men and youth and marriage and a whole slew of things. Mental health, the list just goes on. Uh, and the church is gifted that to anyone who wants uh, to take one of these and go home. And if that helps you and encourage you in a spiritual walk, uh, that's what we're about. And please, please take one uh, in that regard. Uh, just another announcement. On Thursday night, we're having a prayer meeting. It's a call that the elders felt and the council or the leadership felt that we need to commit ourselves to prayer, especially with the ongoings of the church in various areas, uh, with COVID and trying to do church in a changing landscape, with the issue of uh, parent, uh, pastoral search and all that. Uh, it's time for us to come together as a church. So 7 o'clock here, we'll have prayer on Thursday. Uh, that's, this is not a strategy meeting. We're not here to plan. We're here to pray. So the elders are inviting you, please come. Come and let's go before the Lord and pray and seek his face. And may he lead us and guide us as to where we're at. Um, also at the back is a memorial card uh, that, uh, from Don Gisbrecht. Uh, it's at the back. Uh, Clarice and I represented and convey our condolences and sympathy yesterday uh, in Langley. Um, and I spoke at his uh, memorial service. Jean uh, and the family are very grateful to Caribou Community Church and want us to convey that uh, to you on their behalf. So please stand with me, if you don't mind, and allow me to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we come before you. This is just another day, but it's a day that you have set apart where you have gathered us to come and to worship. And Lord, as we come, we come with different expectations. We come with different, perhaps, emotions and experiences this week that may affect how we are this morning. But Lord, we come because our eyes are on you. And in a way, Father, we pray and we're expecting that may you come and speak to your people. May you come and touch each person that's here. And may you minister to us, Lord. And Father, we welcome your presence in our midst. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. We're going to be reading in a little while from Psalm 130. And uh, Psalm 130 starts out as a bit of a lament. The author, David, is crying out to God. It says, out of the depths I cry. But it ends positively. It ends in, in, in worship and praise and triumph. A lot of the Bible talks about lament, talks about sadness, talks about sorrow. And it makes sense because we're broken people. Amen. And if we can't reach out to God in our sorrow, why would we reach out to him in our joy? God knows us. God designed us. He watched us fall. He knows that we go through tough times. He expects us to cry out to him in those times. So we want to, in our worship this morning, we want to reflect that. We want to reflect calling out to God in our, in our tough times, in our sorrows, in, in the hard times. And we want to finish with celebrating who God is and how good He is. So. We don't have a lot, of, a lot of rules at Caribou Community Church when it comes to worship. If you, want to, if you want to sit and listen, that's fine. If you want to sing along, we strongly encourage both of those things. Um, if you want to stand, if you want to clap, um, that's up to you. 
just don't knock anybody over and uh, you know <laughs> don't block the screen all right so hear my cry O oh god attend unto my From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Hear my cry, O oh God, attend unto my plea. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is over. My heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. Hear my cry, O God. Attend on. Lord, I come. Whoops, sorry. Lord, I come, and I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you, where sin runs your grace is more, where grace is found is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ. song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and say so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand, I call on you. Jesus, you're my hope and sin. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense. 
David wrote Psalm 130. He was in a bad place. He was crying out to the Lord. I think we can bring that up on the screen. So, there we go. Uh, that's not the one that I gave you, Fanny. <laughs> it's a different version. So we can find the one that uh, was in, in with the songs, with the song service. So David starts out this psalm. It says, out of the depths I cry to you. Or Help God, I've hit rock bottom. And he walked through this psalm talking to God. And... Uh, Walked through this psalm talking to God, and by the end of the psalm, he's resolved a lot of things, and uh, he understands where he's at. Okay, we'll have the words up here in just a minute. I tell you what, we'll, uh, as a worship team, we'll, we'll read this. And uh, if you want to listen along, then uh, if you know the psalm, then you can go along with us. But we'll go ahead and read this. Psalm 130, it says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my, Hear my voice, Lord. I call to you for mercy. Open, Open my ears, Lord. Lord. If you keep count of all our sins, who could it stand? But there is forgiveness with you, and so, so we honor you. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and, and in his word I hope. More than watchmen wait for the morning, my soul, my soul, waits. soul waits for the Lord. Here is our hope in the steadfast love of the Lord, and, and his, his great saving power. God alone will save us from, from all, all our failings. failings. So he starts with, out of the depths I cry to you, Lord, hear my voice. He ends with, God alone will save us from all our failings. Mm. You 
We're trusting God and not technology, right? I don't want to pick on Fanny. She's got a huge job back there running that, and sometimes things just don't go right. We all know how that is. I think uh, you hear movies and see things about artificial intelligence taking over the world. Not a chance. Because <laughs> the technology will fail, right? So here's Pastor Paul. Psalm, Psalm 130 begins with, Out of the depths I cry. Uh, at this time, we'll take a moment to pray. Uh, it's, it's, it's just important that we pray. We bring some of our requests that concerns the congregation, uh, and we bring it before the Lord. Prayer in that psalm was directed towards God. Mm. Right? Out of my heart, or out of the depths, I cry out to you, O Lord. Right? The, the, the object of prayer is God. It's directed towards Him. And so maybe we could take time to pray. Uh, there are those that have been asked to lead us in different areas. Uh, if you do, please stand up and pray. Uh, please project your voice so everyone can hear. And in the, mi in the middle of that, if you feel like you need to pray, please feel free to pray. This is now when we talk to God about what weighs in our heart. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for being our three-in-one God. It's, uh, uh, like Nina was praying that, uh, Jesus, you came down to shed your blood on the cross and uh, wash us our sins away. And you rose from the dead to prove that uh, that job was finished and that you left your Holy Spirit here to guarantee that what you've said about your children is true. And uh, the blessed hope that we are all going to be re raised from the dead, and, uh, and I know that we just had to bury another friend uh, uh, down in Abbotsford, and uh, I know your word tells us, uh, Psalm 116, verse 15, it says, uh, Blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, so you are fellowshipping with your, or with our brother known, and uh, we appreciate that, and we think about all the other struggles in the world, too, it's not, uh, especially here local, I know we've had COVID breakout on res again, and in the community and it's uh, it's those kind of challenges are, are tough because it isolates people and it uh, and it uh, doesn't seem like anyone hears and and but your word uh, the song we just sang it says i call out to you again and again lord that's what we're doing we're calling out to you and we think about the fires we had uh, some friends and some family and uh, that uh, were evacuated we had uh, communities that got burnt out and 
and those are struggles too because it's just like there's nothing left and uh, but uh, we trust that what we do have is hope in you Jesus that uh, that you are our faithful and so unchanging and we just trust you for that we uh, thank you that uh, your unlimited love and uh, and care for your your people your the the humanity that you loved us enough that you died on the cross Jesus and we thank you that's more than enough to uh, to have fellowship with you and and we we'll just give you the glory and honor for that we, there's uh, a lot of other uh, other things we think about uh, the I know the it's going to be front row center in a public guy this coming week because uh, the residential school stuff is uh, going to be brought home here to Williams Lake and that's going to be um, a challenge for a lot of people and but uh, Jesus with your Holy Spirit and your word and your ministering angels we can overcome this and and that's what you said you said uh, in this world we will have trouble but I have overcome the world that's what you said Jesus so we're by our faith and blood of the lamb we will overcome and uh, which trusted this stuff with uh, the residential school will uh, will and somehow you'll will bring glory to your name the, the Jesus that loves children and uh, we just trust you for that and we commit the rest of this uh, the service into your hands and uh, if anyone else is going to pray we all agree that uh, you'll bind us together in a spirit of unity and a bond of peace and we commit that to you in Jesus name dear Heavenly Father we thank you for the love you show your family Lord we thank you that we're part of your family and we want to pray now for God's family moving forward Lord we've just come out of a unprecedented in time with with COVID, with forest fires. Uh, it feels like in a way that we're opening eye, our eyes and waking up for the first time in a long while. Lord, I just pray for our church here, uh, our group of your family as we go forward into the fall and we, we try to do ministry for you. We try to reach out to you to, to reach others. We try to teach our families uh, how to follow you and we try to learn ourselves how to follow you and Lord I pray for the log church in Hansville too because they're going through the same things Lord they're they want to follow you and they want to reach out they want to grow they want to grow your family Lord you talk so much when you are here about your kingdom and Lord, we, we just pray that we would have that perspective on your kingdom that you had. That we would understand about the kingdom. We would understand who the king is. And that he wants people to come into his kingdom. To be part of his family. Lord, I pray as, uh, as we start up children's ministry this fall, as we start up the different life groups in the church, as we search for a, a, a new permanent pastor, that uh, your hand would be on all that, that you would be guiding us, you would be leading us, you'd be giving us wisdom, you'd be giving us, reminding us that we need to be praying, that we need to be going to you and talking to you about all of this stuff. We can't do it on our own, Lord. We thank you that you're there with us. We thank you that you're faithful. We can trust you in your name. Amen. Father, as we continue the service, we want to pray this morning spe specifically, Lord, for those of us in this room that may be feeling anxious, that may be feeling uh, trouble or worry or distress about different things. And Lord, that's where we often find ourselves in this kind of scenario and Lord we come to church we come to you and sometimes we leave the church carrying those same burdens back to where we come from but yet Lord we hear your voice saying come to me all who are weary and heavy burden it assumes the fact Lord that you are able to take our burdens whether the burden will be pertaining to relationships that is stressful perhaps financial perhaps uncertainty of the future, or maybe even of health, or maybe even ill will, Lord. Maybe things that while within us, Lord, that's causing strain because the way we have been with you and with others. And so, Father, we just want to come as we close our prayer time by confessing, Lord, that we are not perfect. We have sinned. We've done things wrong that are maybe twisted and not in accordance with your way. 
and we want to say, Lord, forgive us. We also want to bring our burdens to you, Lord. Maybe things are not settling well at home. Maybe things are just different, Lord, and we don't know how to deal with it. It overwhelms us even to think about it, and sometimes we just shelve this thought and not even forget or try to forget it. But you see us, Lord. And this morning, in a part of our crying out to you, is coming to you and say, Lord, take these burdens from us. Lift it from your people. And may they experience and encounter freedom and a lightness, Lord, and a life that comes from you. And in that, Lord, bring joy and peace and, Lord, and fruitfulness to your congregation that we may thrive and experience the true shalom of God, the peace of God that is ours through Jesus Christ. And, Father, we pray for that. We even pray for those that are in our midst. The church is foreign to them. Lord, may you speak to them. May you touch them. May you assure them of your love that overwhelms, Lord, sometimes the skepticism that dwells within us. So, Father, may you come by your Spirit and visit each person here. And may they live here knowing that they have met with the person of Jesus Christ through your Spirit. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' most wonderful name. And everyone say, Amen and Amen.
eyes of white. They think you're light, but I'm the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father. He is a good, good Father. He's the definition of good. He's the definition of fatherhood. So We're going to take a break because there's a whole bunch of coffee back there that Leo made that has to be drunk up before you guys leave. So we're going to take a break, take some time to visit a little bit, introduce ourselves to each other. There's got to be people here you haven't met. Make sure that uh, you greet them and make them feel welcome. And there's going to be people that you haven't seen for a long time, so greet them too. Before we go, we're going to pray for the kids, for the families. If you've got little ones, we do have uh, for preschool and up, we've got a class in here, and I believe we've got a class for the older kids today. Can anybody correct me there? The people that correct me have disappeared, so I think that they're in there already. All right. Let's pray for our families. Dear Heavenly Father, your picture of your kingdom is a father with families, brothers and sisters. You tell us that Jesus is our brother, that he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. You tell us that you are our father. And Lord, we know from scripture and we know from our experience that you're a good father. You're the best. Lord, we pray for our families today. We pray for our children. We pray for our parents. Lord, we can come to church all we want, but if we don't worship you in our homes, if we don't learn about you in our homes, if we don't teach our children to love you and explain to our children who you are, we're missing the point. Church isn't, uh, sun Sunday service isn't where all of this happens some of it happens here Lord but most of it happens at home and so Lord we pray that you would make us faithful to our families faithful as fathers as husbands faithful as mothers as wives faithful as children that we would follow you in your name thank you our good father in Jesus name as well amen all right, there's coffee at the back. We're going to take five or six minute break. We're not going to uh, prolong this too much because we'll get a chance to visit after. But feel free to grab a coffee, grab a tea, bring it back to your seat if you'd like. Uh, say good morning, somebody. And uh, yeah, we'll get back together in, oh, I don't know, a few minutes. We'll, we'll yell at you when we're ready. So um, just because there's so much good. Christian music and worship music out there. And Naomi Lomavatu introduced this song to us some months ago, and I just fell in love with it, but it really fits for today. So. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails all my days I've been held in your hands The moment that I wake up Till I leave my head I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been paid You have been so, so good With every breath that I have been born I will, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me in the darkest night, you are close like no other. I 
known you as a father. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good All the regret that I have in I will sing of the goodness Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after. Father, we thank you for this morning. We echo the song that we have just sung, that your goodness, Lord, keeps running after us. And all our lives, you have been good to us. Whether during good times or whether things are well, your goodness, Lord, just flows. It showers us with blessings. And Lord, sometimes we may not be aware of that during difficult, challenging, distressing times. But your goodness is always there. And now, Father, may you come by your Holy Spirit and speak to us, speak to each person, Lord. May you take the words that come out of my mouth, Lord, and allow it to sink deeply into our lives, that the Word of God would transform and change us so that we might become more and more like you, Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. And in his name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Psalm 130. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, you can put your hands up and Rick will come and pass one to you. And if you don't have a Bible at home, you can take a Bible home, right? And you don't have to pay for it. Just make sure you read it. Uh, it's free. So please remember that. I'd like you to turn to Psalm 130 just because um, I don't think so we can put it all up on the screen. I, I would rather that it's open before you because of the structure of the Psalms. I think it's important that you see the flow of it um, that will help us as we go through this. I guess one of the things that you guys don't know about me, or most of you don't know about me, uh, before I go into ministry, uh, I have a career in forestry. I work in forestry for about nine years. Uh, I was working for the government in that regard. Yeah, you wonder why I shift, eh? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so one of, the, one of the things that I did when I was just beginning was uh, run a chainsaw course for some trainees. So there was this guy. We took the thing apart, cleaned it, and started putting it together. And we put the thing, he put the ch chainsaw back together, and there were some screws left or some parts. So we asked him, 
He said, are you done? Oh, yeah, I'm done. So we asked, what about those parts? And he said, oh, those are spare parts that come with a chainsaw. <laughs> uh, that's how I felt this morning about the text that we're going to read. I've been reading on this text. It's been a very meaningful, encouraging source of comfort for me during times of uncertainty when I don't know where things are. I've been reading this psalm and it's been encouraging to me. When we as a church uh, didn't come to the conclusion as, as in relation to our pastoral search, like most of you, I was very disappointed. I was saddened. Um, I don't know what to think. Psalm 130 helped me see things clearly. When last week I saw the hundreds of people running, cleaning, clinging, trying to find a place to jump on that plane that was leaving, trying to leave Kabul airport in Afghanistan. I was horrified. I felt helpless when I tried to understand the depth of despair and fear among the people, not wanting to be left behind. Psalm 130 kind of helped me process things. When I look at the world, the despair, the trouble, the depressing situations, even sometimes as a church, as we seek to find ways to handle and try to COVID-proof the church, knowing that the plan today might not work tomorrow. When things change so much and so fast, when things are unpredictable, Psalm 130 has kind of been a staple for me. When I think about personally in my home, about work and family and things that are happening in my homeland with my family regarding COVID that's kind of split the family, Psalm 130 has put a perspective on things for me. And so this morning I invite you and ask the Holy Spirit to come and to lead us as we look at this text, Psalm 130, 130, 130. and I will read it for us. And we'll just go from there. And uh, perhaps, like I said, keep your Bibles open. There's eight verses to this, right? There are eight verses from verse 1 to verse 8. So there's eight. And uh, you can divide it by in different ways. But I think today I will divide it into three parts. One is the first part where it's very personal. He's talking about himself. Right? He's saying, I'm crying, I'm crying out to you, God. Right? It's all about him. It's very personalized. And the second part is verse 5 and 6, where he talks about his source of hope. It's a strange thing. He said, I wait for the Lord, my whole being, right? My whole, like all that is within me, I wait. For with the Lord, sorry, I wait for the Lord and trust, sorry, in his word, I put my hope, right? Verse 5 there, and I wait for the Lord more than a watchman. Like you can, you can replace that more than a security guard. Right, that does security at night. Right, that idea of waiting, and and you, when you look at it, it's kind of a funny thing, right? It's kind of a tension point because right, you need to. We need to ask the question: If I am with all my being crying out to God in my distress and in my pain, in my frustration, in my sense of hopelessness, why am I waiting? You understand? Right? There's a tension. Right? I'm crying out to God, and yet he's saying, I will wait. I will pause. I will wait for the Lord. Why? Right? Oh, your darkness is covering over you. You are overwhelmed with life. That's what I want to ask him. Right? You are at the end of your rope. Right? You're ready to snap. People don't like to be with you because you're so grouchy. And yet you're saying to yourself, I will wait. Right? Do, you, do you understand? There's a tension there. There's a tension because the pressure is on, and he thinks he, ne he needs to wait. I don't like to wait. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't like to wait. I will wait for Clarice a little bit. <laughs> right? And, and that is the tension. That is a good question to ask. Right? And that is a very important thing, people. Right? When you're looking at the Bible, ask question. Right? Ask question. That's the question. Why? Why would you want to wait? 
Why would you want to wait when the pain is so real? Why would you want to wait when the Taliban is knocking on your door and the plane is flying and you don't have anywhere to go? Why wait? Right? And yet he says very firmly in the middle of this, right? That is the middle part. So you go one to four and then five to six where he talks about waiting, right? And you will notice that I will wait. And I will put my hope in God. I will wait, wait like the security guard that works at night, knowing that the dawn is coming. And I will wait, because I know dawn is coming. Right? Daylight is coming. The danger will pass, because daylight is coming. Right? So you see why he's waiting? Right? He's waiting because people, he's waiting because he is confident. Why wait? Because he's confident and he's trust is in the Lord. Right? He's crying. He said, this is awful. This is terrible. But I will wait because you know what? I will wait because I know that my confidence and trust is in God. That is the important point. Psalm 130 is all about that. It's all about teaching us that during this time that we are going through, it's distressing, it's troubling, you know, we can feel like panicky, we don't know what to do. Right? The idea of waiting is about trusting in God. So this morning, if you live here this morning, I want you to know and understand deeply within you that whatever situation you're going through, you can trust and depend on God. Right? This guy, he was crying. Right? He was crying. Crying is probably not the right word for it. Because there's such intensity, because he said, out of the depths, right? Which means it, 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 it's no longer just in his head now, right? He's at the end of the rope, and he said, out of the depths I cry out. Lord, be attentive. Lord, listen to me. Can't you see me? Can't you see where I'm at? And you see, this morning, my friends, we started with something, right? We did a congregational prayer. Sorry, we didn't start it. We, we kind of participated in a congregational prayer. Right? We did that intentionally. When we, planning the, when we were planning the service, the worship team and I talked, and we thought we should do a congregational prayer. Why? Because most of the time, my friends, we don't often know how to cry to God. Right? You know, I mean... All of us in this room have issues. We have issues that are troubling us. But we don't cry to God. We talk to him a little bit, then we switch on the tube. We talk to him, then we listen to a good music. Right? There's no intensity and intentionality in our lives to cry and to plead before God. Right? In this case, right, he said, I cry out to you. I call out to you, God. Right, as I said earlier on, the objective of prayer and crying out to God is a wonderful thing. Right? It is to God that you call upon people. And you see, it's not only to God. He cries out to God because he, what? he knows God. His confidence is in God. Right? I cry out to you. I call out to you. Out of the depths, I cry out to you. Can I remind you? Right? When... Daniel was in the lion's death den, right? He called out to God. And what happened? God shut the mouth of lions and rescued him. They never touch him. My friends, even from the lion's den, and you feel like things are crawling all over you, and you are feeling hopeless, cry to God. Right? From that point, his prayers pierce whatever was blocking, putting, covering the hole where he was in. It went right to heaven and God heard his prayers, even from the lion's den. Maybe I can remind you of Jonah. Right? Wrapped in seaweed in this big fish in the bottom of the dark ocean. And yet he cried. He cried out to God and God heard his prayers. His prayer. Pierce the darkness, pierce the sound of the waves, pierce the sound of the wind, pierce the sky, and God landed his ear and heard 
his cry. My friends, cry to God. Maybe you don't know how to cry. I can remind you this morning, ask God to teach you how to cry. Ask God to teach you how to cry to him. We don't cry because our hearts are so hard. We have become people who are self-made, self-sufficient. We are good with what we have. That crying to God is a sign of desperation that we know in my heart, God, I have no other recourse except you. So I call upon you. God, please listen to my cry. When Jesus died, the tomb, the rock was placed in front of it. There was death and everything surrounded it. But you see, my friends, the power of God reached. In that darkness, there is light. Where is death, there is life. You see, my friends, there is hope when we learn to cry. When was the last time you cried? Do you remember? Ask God, my friends. I beg you, ask God. Ask God to cry. To cry for your life, to cry for your family, to cry for our church. To cry for our community that's broken, isolated from God. That most of us don't even know how half of our people in our community live. Cry for the peace of God, the shalom of God that brings wholeness and healing to people. We may not know how to do things well, technically speaking or clinically speaking, but we know as a people of God, when we cry, there's a God that hears it. And you see, he said, I will wait. I will wait. I will wait upon you, God. Right? Then I will place my hope on you. And there's a few things there that I just want to highlight and we'll roll right into it. And, he's in, and this is the source of his hope that I feel as I look at this text. Right in, in verse 3, he said, right, if you keep records of sin, Lord, you would not stand. Then it says in verse 34, right? Verse 34. Can you read that? Right? But it says there, but with you there is... Can I hear it? But with you there is forgiveness. Right? And I talked a little bit about this when I spoke at the Log Church, right? The idea of the but there, that B-U-T, right? That is a sign that the writer is kind of surprised, right? His surprise about with you is basically with you, with you, God, the essence of who you are, God, is forgiveness, right? But, but he said, but, he's saying, I'm really surprised, God. This is a rarity that with you, God, there is forgiveness, Right? But with you, God, there is forgiveness. See, I think sometimes, my friends, for us as a people, sometimes we don't learn to cry because we think that we have done things that are so bad that God cannot forgive us. Right? You, I mean, it's, it's not like you don't believe that God forgives. We all believe that God forgives. But it is the stuff that you have done, maybe when you're a kid, or maybe stuff that was spoken about you that you're not good enough, that you're a bad boy or a bad girl. And you grow up all your life being reminded that you are not good. And when it comes to crying to God and trusting in God's confidence, it's hard for you. Because somehow some things linger in your mind that you are not good and God cannot forgive you. Right? And you can name that. This might be something that you have not shared with your spouse or with your children. It sinks very deeply in you. And this psalm is, the psalm is, when I say psalm, it basically means the person that writes the psalm and the prayer. Right? Psalm is a prayer or a song in that case. So the psalmist, the writer, seems surprised. Right? He said, I'm really surprised, God, that with you, in who you are, in your essence, I've come to learn and grasp that you are a forgiving God. With you, the essence of your being is forgiveness. Just as God is love, there is forgiveness. Right? Romans 1, Romans 8 verse 1. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. What he's saying is that I thought, God, that you are a God that's filled with judgment. 
that all you do is you judge me for the wrongs that I have done. Right? And he's saying, but with you, God, it's forgiveness. Therefore, I can come and I can cry to you. Because I know when you forgive me, we can have this relationship, reverence, worship. Right? Reverence is another word for worship. We can be reconciled. I can be made right. When you look at me, you don't look at me as my sins deserve, as I deserve because of my brokenness. You look at me as a person that's been renewed, made in your image, have hope that we can have this wonderful relationship. Right? And that's what that verse means. He, this, he was surprised. And he's reminding you and me, my friends, this morning I want you to know, I want you to know this morning, if you think you're bad, let me tell you something. That's an opportunity for God to show his mercy and his grace towards you. You are not bad enough that God would forget you. No, no, never. That's who God is, my friends, to you. Say, with God, there is forgiveness. And this morning, if you're here and you feel like all your life you've been reminded of how bad you are, this morning, take a bow before God and say, God, hear my cry. Cleanse my heart, for it's not been right. My mind, because it's been warped. The actions that I've done is so terrible. I cannot even forgive myself, but I can find forgiveness in you alone through Jesus Christ. If you think you're bad, there's nothing that God can do to you. God can help you and save you from that. See, God is the forgiving God. Right? That's the beauty of that. So he can, he can cry to God. He can say, I can place my hope in you, God, because you're a forgiving God. The other, one that I, the other thing that he mentioned in Psalm 31, um, in, in verse 7, right? Then he talks about, this is the third part, right? He talks about the community. Now he moves from I. He talks about the hope in the middle from verse 5 and 6. Then he said, and he seems to speak to the people of God, right? So he can, you can say, Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, that's that phrase again, right? For with the Lord, your essence, Lord, that I have come to learn is that in you is unfailing love, right? And so you can substitute that. You can say, Caribou Community Church, put your hope in the Lord. Right? Caribou Community Church, you can wait, but put your hope in the Lord. Then it says this, for with the Lord. Right? That's that phrase. For in the essence of God is this unfailing love, or the other, other translation would say steadfast love. Right? And this is some, to some, you know, some scholars have mentioned that this is probably part of the uh, psalm that was written when the people were coming out of, uh, coming out of exile, and they remembered this, right? They remembered God's unfailing love, and they begin, and this was put into the psalm of ascent. When people go to worship them, they remind themselves of it. So this is part of that. Right? They were cast away. God took them away. God sent them into exile. But God never forgotten them. God told them, when you go after seven years, I will come back. And I will call you out of where you are. See, that's the unfailing love of God. Right? Sometimes we think we fall, in fa we fall out of favor with God. And God has forgotten us. Right? This text reminds us that God remembers. And he thinks of you and he loves you. From Psalm 43, right, it says this, when you walk through the fire, you will not burn, right? When you walk through the waters, you will not drown, right? All this, when you walk through the rivers, right, God will be with you, right? That is an unfailing love, my friends. Whatever we go through, wherever we're at, God's unfailing love will be with you. Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. Right? That's an amazing, amazing statement. Right? That God's love towards us is, is wonderful in that way. In verse, in verse, just in verse 4, right? In verse 4 of Isaiah 43, it says this, Since you are precious and honored in my sight, 
And it comes with this phrase, and because I love you. Right? I've said this often. Perhaps this is the only time that God used this first person. Right? When he talks to people and he says, I love you. This is probably the only time in the Bible. Maybe I'm wrong, but you can check it out. And he says to the people, right? These people who have decided that they don't honor him, they have worshipped other gods, they've done all kinds of things. And this is God's word to them. And he said, you are precious to me. Right? You are precious to me, and you are honored in my sight. Just think about that. Right? Think about your life. Think about your relationship with God. Right now where you're at, think about it. And think about this. When God says this to you, you are precious to me. You are honored in my sight. Think about that. Right? No wonder he said, but you go, God, right, with you is forgiveness. Right? Because when we look at ourselves honestly in light of God's holiness, we couldn't fathom that there is a God that loves you so much that despite our brokenness, our stubbornness, our rebelliousness, even our badness, so to speak, and sin, he says to you, ah, you are precious to me, and you are honored in my sight. And he comes the bomb, and he said, I love you. I, you see what God does? He says, I love you. To each one of you, and to us as a church, God loves you. Right? And he said, but with you is unfailing love. And he wraps it up. He said, I can wait. I can hope in God. Because with God is full redemption. With God is full redemption, people. What does that mean? It means that when God, gives him, when, when God saves you, he does not save you partially. Right? He does the whole thing. That he gave his one and only son. He did not only send the prophets to make it right. The idea of lamb sacrifice is done. Now he gave his one and only son. For you and for me. That we might have a relationship with him. Full redemption my friends. That we can come to know him and be saved. Not only now but for eternity. As I said earlier on, like yesterday I was speaking at Don's funeral. Right? And in the end, part of full redemption is knowing that he's in a place where there is no pain, no more tears, no more suffering. And he's with the Father. You see, my friends, that's what redemption means. It's your life that God has taken and has kept for you in this life and life to come. So, as we move on this week, as we move on in the months to come, please learn and ask God to teach you to cry. And learn and ask God to teach us that we may hold on and trust and put our confidence in Him. Trust in Him. And learn to know His Word and allow His Word to faster and to, and to work its way in our lives that we will continuously be changed and be more and more like him. And may I encourage you, whatever situation you're facing, whatever things that have been lingering in your life, that now COVID has just made it worse, take time, my friends. Take time alone. Take time as a couple. Take time in the group that you're part of at Caribou Community Church and the church you belong to. And ask yourself, Lord, teach us to cry. I know when I play rugby, there's something that we always say, big boys don't cry. When I came to, to be a Christian, I said, Lord, teach me to cry. Tears cleanses the soul. And it waters the heart to allow the seed of truth to grow. It is good to cry. Let us bow heads and pray. Father, we have talked today about just about you, Lord. There are certain concepts and truth here that are very understandable to most of us. But sometimes, Lord, we need to look at it differently. And this morning we pray that you teach us, Lord, to learn how to cry. Learn how to weep, not only for ourselves, but for others. 
grant us, Lord, an intensity to long more for you, Jesus, in our lives. And Father, today there are people perhaps that are carrying burdens that's known only to you. And we don't see that, Lord. But we pray that may you prompt them, Lord, whoever they are, that they would come to you and that you would listen to the cries of their hearts. Father, open our eyes to see you, to see you more clearly and draw us closer to you, Lord, that we might feel the pulse and also, Lord, the sense of your overwhelming love. Thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that through him we have come to have life. And Father, we thank you and we praise you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Please, let's stand as we close with this song. take over lunch yeah no oh okay we're gonna complete a feed em engineering here and we're gonna set up a whole bunch of tables so all you able-bodied guys we need your help we need a bunch of tables out here we need these chairs around them you can smell that the ladies have got the soup ready so what's going to happen here today is we're not going to do it buffet style we're not going to just set everything out and let everybody splash through we're, uh, we're going to serve the soup from the window, trying to keep in uh, kind of with the COVID restrictions. So there's going to be soup and buns. And, uh, well, you'll get your own bowl, Cliff. No, it's not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not going to spoon feed you. But uh, uh, give the ladies a bit of time to uh, get things organized. We're going to give the fellows a bit of time to get tables set up. And we have a couple of couple of uh, caribou community church restrictions we let the elders go first all right so you can decide if you're an elder or not but there's some of you if I see you in line I'm going to kick you out all right you can go to the end of the line we let the elders go first we encourage parents with smaller children to take their children through the line with them we love kids but uh, just take your kids through the line with you and uh, we're going to pray right now. If everybody can pause, we're going to say grace for the meal right now so that we can just start it in a little while, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we can 
gather as a family and enjoy a meal together. We thank you that you are our Father. We thank you 